All right. That was an awesome show by the Diva Hour. This is Lady Jam's Juice Box. We are here on Art FM Louisville. What a beautiful day. It's finally cooling off for us here in the, in our fair city. Um, I'm joined by Andy Matter today, who's in the studio with me. Um, he's got some really cool stuff, all Velvet Underground related. So tell me what, tell me what you're up to, Andy. Uh, well, good, good afternoon. Hi, everybody who's just getting off lunch now. Don't, don't go to sleep quite yet. Uh, I'm Andy Matter, and I'm here today to tell, talk to you about October 3rd, when Art Sanctuary uh, will be hosting the Reloaded Plastic Inevitable. Uh, it is a celebration of the Warhol factory, the plastic exploding inevitable, which happened 50 years ago. Uh, we're going to be showing several films uh, by Andy Warhol, and we're going to have uh, several photos from that era, several, several pl- prints on display. What uh, I'm in charge of is putting together a Velvet Underground tribute act. We'll be performing uh, a live version of the Velvet Underground and Nico album. Oh, cool. And so you're going to be Lou Reed, correct? Uh, as, as someone once said, I want to be a singer like Lou Reed. Okay. And so I get to try that now. Yes, I'm uh, doing the Lou vocals. Our, our Nico is uh, a lady out of Dayton, Ohio, um, named Nicole Richter. And she sings for the area band uh, Curse of Cassandra. Ah, cool. Well, this sounds really interesting, but let's let's kind of start it off with some of your music. Can you tell us what you've brought us? Uh, this is uh, a song I put on the first head cleaner. I did most of the instruments. It's a song I was inspired by my ladies in the Derby City Roller Girls uh, to do. This is a, a song about roller derby entitled Roll on Top. All right. Let's hear it. Awesome. So that's a, a roller girl jam, huh? About uh, the it, length is, of that. it is intended to be. About two minutes is the standard roller derby uh, jam. That's as much time as allotted. That that song is two minutes, maybe two minutes, one second. And any any of the Derby City roller girls who'd want to use that as their song during a, a jam would be more than encouraged to. I've, I've said this for three years now. I'm still waiting. Uh, <laughs> just, just any time, ladies. Any All time. Right. <laughs> Well, they're certainly a fun group to go see as well. They are really they are, great athletes. They're the state's, my, my favorite sports team. My great. favorite sports team. Now, I, I have been aligned with them for some nine years, so a bit of bias. Uh, but I, I am thrilled every time I get to see them. Yeah, it's a, it's a really energetic experience. If anybody ever gets a chance to go out and see them, you should. Um, so tell me a little bit about how you got 
it, what was the idea of coming up with this band to cover the Velvet Underground? Uh, well, Joe Mays, who mm-hmm. is uh, really one of the main people responsible for this, along with Lisa Fry, he and I have known each other for many years because of Roller Derby. Okay. And he has seen a couple of my projects. And when this came up, he first came to me and said, well, well, I think first, maybe two people told him no before me. I don't know. And he told me, yeah, uh, would you like to put something together for this? Do the Velvet Underground? I was very intrigued. Uh, I haven't, I've done a few cover projects over the years. I haven't done one in a while. So this was kind of fun. So I, you know, did the laziest thing possible and called all my friends who I've played music with over the years. Uh, that includes, uh, Eric Supli, who uh, is a bandmate of mine in Opposable Thumbs and also is in a Heat Machine uh, to cover one guitar. Uh, my friend Rory Hanka, who's been a bandmate of mine in Mimi von Schnitzel, and he was in our, our little gospel band that we did several years back for a brief time, uh, had him on keys. Uh, Tyler Chanley, a friend of mine who uh, is in Insect Policy, he uh, is also affiliated with Modern Cult Records. He uh, uh, was good for the other guitar position. Plus, uh, Insect Policy actually did a Velvet Underground cover set earlier in the year. So he, he kind of had the material, and he, he gets to brag like he got to do both Velvet Underground tribute sets in 2015 in Louisville. So he alone gets that. Uh, my friend Jason Walker, who's in 10 Wet Dollars and uh, New Bravado, uh, is our drummer. And Joe had... P- oh, actually, I should bring up Joe Coleman, who came recommended uh, through Tyler to play violin. Uh, we, we really needed someone good for those violin songs. Yeah, those are challenging. They are quite. I didn't realize how much detuning is needed. For uh-huh. some, and I also did not realize how difficult it can be to detune. A, a, there is no drop D in violin, it turns out. Right. <laughs> so it's not as easy to detune, and Joe has been fantastic every step of the way. Uh, and then a f- in a few weeks, Joe, Joe introduced us to Nicole and brought her on board. Uh, we're about to have our first full band session, I think, next weekend. We've yet to have all seven of our outfit together. So this could be a total bust. This is a gamble. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> well, one anything away. good you should feel, you know, I think in the creative process or anything you do that kind of makes you feel edgy and nervous is a good thing because that means... You know, I have been very nervous through a lot of this in that, and I think this comes whenever you have to do someone else's work, Sure, is you have to figure that line between what everyone expects to hear resembling the Velvets or, you know, the artist you're covering, and then what you do to keep yourself in that work, and how much is too much of your own stamp on someone else's work. And a lot of times we've just had to throw up our hands sometimes and just say, well, th- th- this is how we sound. This isn't quite how the Velvet sounded. This is, this is how we sound. Yeah, I've had a couple uh, bands that I know have done some really cool um, cover sets, but you know, and maintaining that integrity of the original band, I think, is challenging. So you don't lose sight of what makes it you, because you don't want to just go in and do a carbon copy of something. But I know Vice Tricks did Nick Cave last winter, and they were great. And then uh, the Belgian Waffles did the Joy Division once, and it was just so interesting to see their take on it. And so I'm excited to see what you guys are going to do. And as an added benefit, we we're at least I'd say three weeks up on most of the cover acts that are going to happen, so we won't have that much to be compared with initially <laughs> well that's good it's you know, always hard to follow genius you know? exactly I'll, you know someone could talk about the television tribute band like a month after we play and i'll be fine with that <laughs> sounds good well we're gonna hear some velvet underground now too do you have a, a selection for us that sounds intriguing uh you know it was gonna take me a minute because i've been dreadfully slow uh but i was i believe we had just spoken uh there's a fantastic recent uh, update of the classic Velvet Underground and Nico album that is everything short of comprehensive, just an amazing number of songs. And if I could find it, ah, here we are. And there are several live and mono versions of some of these songs. And what you may not know when you hear some of these songs uh, on the recording is there's some speeding up, there's some slowing down, there's some crazy tunings on some of the stuff. And it just took us a while to realize on some of these songs, well, unless we do this and this, it's not. uh, A Sunday morning is about a hair up from what your standard tuning is. And the same with the song I was uh, going to play now, uh, Venus in Furs. All right. So this will be closer in tune to what you'll hear on October 3rd. <laughs> All right. Well, that sounds interesting. Let's go ahead and check it out. Shiny boots of leather, whiplash girl. 
an alternative version of Venus in Furs by the Velvet Underground. I'm here in the station with Andy Matter, who's part of the big Velvet Underground celebration at Art Sanctuary. I, 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 I'd be remiss if I didn't say it was actually the Warhol celebration. It's, it's, it's not just the Velvets. It's everything. I guess that's true. Warhol. Yeah. We have a, a bunch of... We're going to be showing Chelsea Girls, the film oh, yeah. Chelsea Girls. And um, we're, we're, there's going to be a very special Oot Greet performance. Um, now, uh, now, Utgrit and Sapat both, I think, have done this before, where they'll play to a silent film. I got to see Sapat do this at a horror film convention oh, neat. several years ago, and it was amazing. Now, what Utgrit plans to do is there is a Warhol film, a short film, a silent film, 
uh, with a name that I don't care to give you since we're no longer internet exclusive. And it's about uh, an artist who, from the neck up, it's his reaction shot as he receives a gift from someone, a gift of admiration. And it's Warhol's silent film, and Utgrid will be playing an improvisational piece, I, re- I assume, while said person in said film receives said gift. Well, I think it's what uh, uh, Marilyn Manson, forgive me for Marilyn Manson, but um, says it's like a, a rock star, uh, a handshake for a rock star. Sure, sure. I don't understand why you're apologizing for Marilyn Manson. Was it you? Was it, <laughs> you, you I am Marilyn name? Manson. Uh, you know, I didn't want to say anything out loud, but <laughs> I have never, I've never seen you two together <laughs> now that I think of it. That's right. That's right. All right. Well, we're going to get back into it and play, uh, you know, a BJ Thomas song here in a minute in in honor of the Utgrit silent film score. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about what's going on here at Art FM. We are live in Louisville, Kentucky, and uh, we are working to get on the FM dial. And so after two years of uh, online broadcasting, we have the FCC approval, and we're going to go forward with raising our tower. And so we do need the money to purchase a transmitter and hoist our attendant so you guys can hear not just on on the internet but broadcast on the fm dial uh art fm and enjoy this unique local programming that we provide to the community each and every day so we're looking for fifty thousand dollars which sounds like a lot but with a community of people supporting us we can get a little bit here and there and that money will grow so We are working with CrowdRaise as a fundraiser uh, because we are a 501c3 nonprofit um, to get donations that are tax deductible. Several of our DJs have their own fundraising pages and have something of a competition running among themselves. So we encourage you to check them out and give your support to your favorite program. Uh, Membership opportunities are also available and we'll be grateful for any support you're able to give. ArtFM is an exciting project and we would love to have you Help us move WXOX onto the FM dial. So you can check that out at www.crowdraise.com slash WXOX. And go ahead and sign up for a membership if you haven't yet. We've got great opportunities uh, coming up, too, and lots of wonderful programming. Coming up later today, too, we have Punk Rockets, Leslie Millar, Olivia Millar, and Ethan Buckler present Mixtapes and Miscellanea from 1982 and beyond. That's immediately following the juice box from 2 to 4 p.m. So, Andy, go ahead and tell us what we're going to hear now. Uh, I believe we're going to hear uh, the inimitable B.J. Thomas and Hooked on a Feeling. In honor of that Andy Warhol silent film. All the good love when we're all alone, keep it up. 
here and it's a feeling of gratitude for for all the cool Velvet Underground and Warhol stuff that's going to be going on but there's a few other really interesting things going on as well because we're so lucky so tell us about it uh well uh I uh I am the 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 handsome gentleman who sometimes uh surround me who take the name 10 what dollars uh will be joining me on September 19th uh, as we play the Shotgun Fest or the uh, Festivals of Shotgun or Shoddy Days or whatever they call it. I think it's it's gone under a few name changes and location changes. Uh, but on the afternoon of September 19th, we're going to be joining a bunch of talented people. Heat Machine, Rude Weirdo, uh, I believe Brenda, the band, uh, and others are going to be playing that afternoon and in, going into the evening. Uh, so that should be fun. It's been a while since I played outdoors which is always weird, and I think possibly it's 5 o'clock, so I'll be playing while the sun is out, which is another uh, strange phenomenon that I can never get over. <laughs> Hopefully it's a pretty day. You know, if you put some sunglasses on, you may think it's, you know, dusk at least. So I'm going to have to pay more for the sunglasses that I buy probably for it to actually have that effect, but possibly. <laughs> <laughs> so I have that. Um and really, you know, it's it's funny. I've kind of just been wrapped up in doing these Velvet Underground songs, and I'm just getting to the point now where I talk to other people and say, man, I can't wait to hit that first original note. I can't wait to play my – like, I listened to uh, something I recorded two weeks ago in my living room for the first time. Just, I, I you know, I haven't ha- given myself that kind of time uh, since – I, I took a couple of weeks off to add something to the upcoming Head Cleaner album, which uh, is going to be huge. Uh, apparently, uh, I've heard from my friends at Gubby Records that it's going to exceed uh, the number of tracks, which I believe was 104 from wow. last year. This one's going to be bigger, I think. All right. Well, now who's involved with that? Who, what are some of the just, I know you can't name all 104 artists, but. Oh, God. Well, oh, no, that was last year. Like I said, it's going to exceed that. But well, I know, all the artists. <laughs> um, I, I know, uh, I believe there's a new Bravado Project uh, song in there. I believe there's uh, an ultra pulverized tune. Oh, that great. That was contributed prior to everything that happened. Mm-hmm. Um, a couple of bands that I've had the pleasure to play with and play in. One or the other, or both. Uh, Half Sloppy is one who I know are going to add something. Uh, I haven't really had a chance. Now, I, I, I know last year, uh, Dave Rosinski of Guppy Records had me over to help sequence. So I'm hoping, I'm, I'm praying, you know, I get to, to uh, cross my fingers and hold my breath that I'll get that phone call in about a month where we'll spend a weekend just in this basement, listening to song after song, acting like music geeks, being like, well, is it, I don't know, is it a, it's, a, it's a good second side, third song. It's a good third song for a second side on the third tape. That's, that's great. You know, just to come up sequencing like that. So I, I, I hopefully will get to be a part of that again. Well, and you're live on the radio today, so hint, hint. <laughs> I'm promoting you, man. <laughs> of course. <laughs> So let's get back to the the Andy Warhol and Velvet Underground event at Art Sanctuary, uh, which is the Reloaded Plastic Inevitable, and it's going to be fantastic. But you've brought another song with you from one of the musicians that's going to be playing with. Uh, yes, this is uh, Opposable Thumbs, that I, I'm also the drummer, and I happen to play with Eric Suplee, who will be one of our guitars. This was something we did on the last Head Cleaner, a song called Crawl Baby. All right, let's hear it. I like the way you walk around 
right. That was awesome. Um, we are back with Andy Matter here at Art FM Louisville. He's telling us about the Art Sanctuary celebration of Warhol and the Velvet Underground, the reloaded exploding plastic inevitable uh, uh, the, uh, explo- uh, the reloaded plastic inevitable plastic inevitable sorry <laughs> I, i've had that same problem and for all i know i'm saying it wrong still i'll check my phone for the first call i get from joe that i'm not saying it right was it there in the uh, the factory that wasn't it exploding at some point though i believe there were some explosions at this at, at some point though actually we're, we're deviating a lot because I, I and i found this out only months into learning all the material uh i looked up the velvet's performance at the plastic exploding inevitable it was 13 minutes so we're, we're, yeah. So we're 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 stressing ourselves over. Oh, wow, are we doing this right? Are we doing this right? And then I go back, and it's you. You just did three songs. You just did three <laughs> songs, and I don't know. Went to go hang out at the at the after party. Well, that's not right. But so that that it's a weight off the shoulders. You know <laughs> that you're already deviating that much any further is just gravy. Well, and the Velvet Underground was just a, such an amazing band. They influenced so many musicians, and just their their impact on music has been huge. You know, I think a, a, a big part of their importance is they really blew up the idea of pop music as art. I think by pairing it with Warhol's work, um, you know, which is something that up to that time might have been seen as just something for the kids, something to take money from parents or whatever. Now it gets this raised view, this 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 esteemed position that, art so to speak has which i guess given the name of the station here this is very fitting we talk about this here that music as a popular music as art became uh, more of a substantial idea thanks to bands such as the velvet underground that looked past or beyond just the the structure of four four songs play this make it about this make it about that well, and there's something interesting too for me about Andy Warhol in general. You know, he he is the first one that we would call sort of appropriating imagery for art and transforming the transformative nature of what he did. It took me when I was a little kid, I'd see Andy Warhol work, and I really didn't get it because I was a little kid and I didn't know a whole lot about art. Um, you know, at at ten when I think, yeah, my first exposure to Warhol is that Cars video. Okay, yeah, that's right. You that's know, right. right. So if. And, and and I think that's funny that Warhol found this kind of he he looked for the art in the small things and the things we would consider cheap, like a soup can, you know the the things that we see as commonplace are art. Well, and the thing that's interesting to me too, I actually saw a Warhol retrospective several years ago in New York, and. Seeing the reproductions, it's true of everything, whether you're looking at Van Gogh or, or anyone that's very process oriented, you seeing the reproductions really don't do the work justice. They're quite amazing in person. The layers, the intricacy of the process itself. So he really did know what he was doing. It, it does look a lot better than the, the IMG, the PDF that you, you see cheaply done. Uh, and, and, you know, you, you, you can't help but think of the propheticness if that's a word and it's not, of Warhol in that I, I kind of wish everyone just had 15 minutes of fame. <laughs> no doubt. Everyone now just gets their own channel. Right. We all have, you know, multiple hours of fame in some sense. Just horrible, horrible degrees of entertainment. You, you have to actually make it a point to, to attempt to not be entertained. Within a 24-hour period. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. Well, speaking of the Velvet Underground, let's get back into it with another El- Velvet Underground song. Do you, do you have one that you want to want for us to hear? Uh, you know what? I, I, I Just because I haven't... Actually, I do have a favorite, but I'd rather just put that off for a second. Okay. And let's go to Sunday morning. All right. Sunday morning brings the dawn in. It's just a restless feeling by my side. Early dawn in Sunday morning. 
It's just the wasted years so close behind Watch out, the world's behind you There's always someone around you who will call It's nothing at all Sunday morning And I'm falling I've got a feeling I don't want to know Early dawning Sunday morning It's all the streets you cross not so long ago Watch out, the world's behind you There's always someone around you who will call It's nothing at all
that was the Velvet Underground with I Found a Reason. And we've all walked down life's lonely highways hand in hand with ourselves. Quite quite too frequently sometimes. Quite too frequently. Um, so coming up later today on Art FM, we have Take, take a look deep beneath the studios of Art FM. And we have specialized ultra high fidelity stereophonic esoteric equipment that allows us to monitor dreams, nightmares, and reveries to create the perfect midnight soundtrack. You can fall deep down the rabbit hole with Dr. Dave Friday nights from midnight to 2 a.m. So check that out, some of the unique programming here on Art FM Louisville. We're here in the studio talking to Andy Matter about uh, Art Sanctuary's uh, coming upcoming celebration of Warhol and the Velvet Underground. And you should also know that Art Sanctuary is a 501c3 nonprofit organization and they do a lot of things to foster the arts in the community from performances with the Vava Vixens as well as artist studios and art happenings and general arty goodness. They're a fantastic organization. Go ahead and check them out online or on Facebook. Give them a like if you uh, if you feel so inclined. You can also give Lady Jam's juice box a like on Facebook and I'll I'll give you a little emoji emoji hug if you do. All right, so we're here with Andy Matter. So so tell us what's uh, up next with one of your musicians here. Ah, one of our bandmates in what what has been dubbed the Velveteen Underground. Uh, nice. I, 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 well, I assume because the Velveeta Underground would get us sued. Uh, <laughs> but this is uh, d- uh, Insect Policy featuring, uh, I believe, Mr. Tyler Chandling plays guitar on this track. Uh, I know he plays it out live. I'm not sure about this recording, but uh, I'm very, very indebted to Tyler. He has really helped out here with our process and... I'm quite a big fan of his band. Well, tell me about Insect Policy real quick before we play it. Um, it it's a band that I'm actually not that familiar with, so I'm curious. Well, um, I'm Mr. Brian Manley, who also has a show on here. Right, uh, right. This was one of his projects initially. I believe it started with some basement recordings, very avant-garde sort of and then it and then structure slowly came to it and then what became i think just like a solo project of him uh has blossomed into a four piece now oh great uh, they've had a few several good sets and like i said they they have also done a velvet underground cover set uh, i believe they that was at the old modern cult with uh sweater meat and a few other local acts Ah, oh, great! So hope so. So it, it it definitely helps a bit. Tyler has that learning curve. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing this tune and and sort of projecting my visions of the Velvet Underground onto it. Oh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs>
That was Dinner, or the Dinner Bells with Magnificent Sea. Featuring the talented Rory Hanka, who can be heard in the Velveteen 
Underground on October 3rd among a cast of many others at the awesome Reloaded Plastic Inevitable at Art Sanctuary on October 3rd. I'm Andy Matter and I was born to pitch. There you go. Well, we're real excited. And you've got some other musicians that are coming with this big collaborative presentation you're doing uh, celebrating the Velvet Underground. So, uh, Yeah, I previously mentioned uh, Jason Walker, who uh, he, he is a rather talented drummer. Uh, you can hear him in my backing band, Ten Wet Dollars, or hear him in the fantastic Louisville outfit, New Bravado, uh, who just have an incredible new release coming on vinyl i can't wait to hear it uh and this is uh well i mean the the, the velvet stuff is kind of weird for him because it's not the most difficult i i, I tell him I, I feel like i tell him after every song we practice and that's really all you do uh, <laughs> this this song so similar really shows off uh jason's chops though all right well let's check it out
All right, that was Soul Similar, and uh, that was one of the musicians that's going to be playing at the celebration of the Velvet Underground at Art Sanctuary. I'm here with Andy Matter. We're wrapping it up here today on Lady Jam Shoes Box. So, t- hi, hi, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just tell us real quick. Uh, yes, on October third, Art Sanctuary is playing host uh, to several Warhol films, several performances by uh, some fantastic area musicians: uh, Utgrit, Sapat, and the humble little supergroup, uh, the Velveteen Underground. Uh, will be among the many, many reasons you should come out to Art Sanctuary on October 3rd to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the plastic exploding inevitable. I, I humbly think that it's going to be so grand. 50 years from now, there's going to be a celebration of the 50th anniversary celebration in which a cover band of, our cover band, known as the Ovaltine Greyhound, uh, we'll be playing. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. So, so, so check it out now. Otherwise, you'll have to wait a half a century. October 3rd, everybody. It's a long time to wait. Uh, let's round up with a Coliseum song. And up next, stay tuned for Leslie Millar with Punk Rockets here on Art FM Louisville.